Watch, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. In the holy name of Jesus, amen. Well, there's the warning for today. There may not be a tomorrow. And you don't want to be caught flat-footed. Better not be napping on the job. Be careful not to let your guard down. Don't let life's cares and pleasures distract you. Be wise, not foolish. Be prepared. So, watch, watch out, stay awake. Night is flying. But how? How are we supposed to stay awake? How are we to remain prepared? How are we to look? And for that, Jesus tells us a parable, and that of ten virgins. This is a parable of his kingdom, a parable of the church. You'll note they have many things in common. They all took their lamps. They were all virgins. They were all waiting for the bridal party, and they were watching and waiting for the bridegroom. But then Jesus drops the bomb. Five were wise and five were foolish. And then he tells us what that means. Five had lamps with more oil in vessels, and five only had lamps filled with the oil that they thought they'd need. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. The bridegroom was delayed. If you've ever been to a wedding, you know that it's, it's kind of rude to be late for your own wedding. The unpredictable, though, sometimes happens. This is not so unpredictable now, is it? He's told us. But there they are, those foolish who thought that he wouldn't take that long. Midnight? You've got to be kidding. So they thought that they were ready, but in the end, they were not. There's only enough for the wise, and there's no other oil that can be gathered at such a late hour. The cellars are closed, if they could even give you the oil in the first place. Time is up. The wedding must begin, and the door is shut. Now, this is a parable that is a wedding, uh, of a wedding that is a warning for you. So the question is, maybe the one you're wondering, am I one of the wise, or am I one of the foolish? Are you concerned that you haven't stored up enough oil to last while the bridegroom is delayed until he finally comes? Maybe you're asking then, what, what do I need to do now so that I'm not caught flat-footed, unprepared, asleep, distracted, looking the other way, unguarded? Well, listen. Listen, the church bells, the wedding bells, are ringing. And those who are not ready indeed will be shut out. But those who are ready go in and enjoy the feast. How are they ready? How are they prepared? It's entirely on the basis of whether their lights remained lit so that they could see the way to the wedding feast, so that the way was clearly seen. So we have light and we have the way. What is the way? How can it clearly be seen? What do you do, need to do now? Well, you probably know the answer. It's a simple answer. Maybe not an easy answer. It's simply this. How are you prepared? That's what Jesus is doing right now. Be who you are. Be the Christian you've been given to be. Live each day in your baptism. Listen to Jesus. Confess your sins and be absolved in Jesus' blood. Eat and drink the supper that Jesus sets before you. That's how Jesus prepares you. Those are the means that Jesus gives to bring you into his church, to keep you with him, and to prepare you ever watchful and awake 
for the eternal day. That all makes sense if you remember that Jesus is the way and Jesus is the light. So it is these means that Jesus has appointed by which he, he the Holy Spirit, Jesus' Spirit, fills your lamps with all the oil that you will need and even more. Jesus' word and gifts are how he creates and sustains you in the faith today, tomorrow, and forever. So in one sense, you don't need to do anything to be prepared. You don't need to do anything. Because Jesus is doing and will continue to do everything that is needed to keep you and preserve you in his wisdom with lamps lit and oil enough and more. That's his gift to you, begun at your baptism and ongoing for you here in divine service. So don't do anything. Just let your ears be open and your hearts receiving. But also in another sense then, if you're going to do anything, get out of Jesus' way. Don't lay before yourself and others unnecessary stumbling blocks. Don't set up detours away from Jesus. What do I mean? Well, maybe don't make the faith about an endless list of do-betters and you better do. Don't try to turn the church just into another social club of like-minded friends. Don't look to the liturgy and the hymnody of the church as simply a happy drug. And don't expect from preaching and teaching that it would entertain you or amuse you. Although I might tell a joke from here and, here and there, right? It's true, all these things actually may come. We don't want to diminish them. It's true that this is a family of faith, like-minded in Christ. It's true that music is a gift from God that can uplift the soul and encourage. And it's true that sometimes preaching and teaching does amuse us. Jesus himself, I think, is often quite a bit funnier than we think. But that shouldn't be our first priority or our first love. That can distract us, detour us from what really matters. All of those gifts, if they're given by Jesus, are a fruit of the light, not the light themselves. So you might have friends here. Your heart might be stirred up by the music of the church. You might laugh and delight when the word is preached and taught. And God be praised if they do. But doing the good thing and having the best friends and singing your favorite hymns and hearing words that tickle your ears, that's not the light. That won't lead you out of the darkness into God's marvelous light. Paul is quite clear today in the epistle that the true oil of gladness, that which shows the way, is Christ crucified for you. The content of your faith, that is the oil that keeps the lamp burning, is Jesus' sacrificial death and triumphant resurrection. That's the oil that keeps you faithfully lit with Jesus Christ. He would have you rejoice and be glad and sing of the gift of the cross. And maybe even to weep with tears of joy at the words of absolution. Christ's light remains shining bright as he stokes the flame of his love in you by his gifts. And even now he sets a rich feast before you and it's not going to be the one you receive on Thursday especially if you couldn't afford a turkey and you have to eat soy protein. <laughs> but the richest feast that you have today, well, it's right here, and it's on the altar for you. He gives you all that you need for this body and life. He gives you himself to strengthen and preserve you unto life everlasting. More oil for the lamp. So again, his words and gifts are how Jesus brings you and all those whom he calls wise to him 
and then unto the wedding feast that has no end. Christ Jesus has bound you to himself in baptism. And being bound to Jesus means you're also bound with all those past, present, and future, all the saints who are in him. Already now, the eternal fellowship of the baptized, the kingdom of heaven, is here around Jesus and his word. The Holy Spirit calling, gathering, enlightening, and sanctifying us as we hear, pray, sing, eat, drink, and live in Jesus. And though you don't see it, here's the truth, you are surrounded by, as the writer to the Hebrews says, so great a cloud of witnesses, surrounded even now with saints and angels and archangels and the whole heavenly host of believers in his name. Yes, you're looking forward to a day that is to come, but that day is already now. My friends, you've already been brought to God, to his holy Zion, his mountain. You are already, by your baptism, been made citizens of his heavenly kingdom, his Jerusalem. The serpent has already been trampled under his feet, and every division and chaos that the great dragon has spewed has already been overwhelmed by the clear and loud trumpet blast of Jesus' word. You are forgiven. What that means is that those who were once enemies of God have already been reconciled to Jesus in his blood. Those who were once enemies of each other are now given to kneel at a common table and received from shared bread and cup the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. You are already now, then, inheritors of a new heaven and a new earth, now by faith and then by sight. Jesus already having breathed into you life and already brought unity to his cloven church once more. Maybe you just fell asleep. So wake up. Here is the bridegroom. Come and meet him, you who are blessed in all wisdom and faith in Jesus, confessing and making melody to him with joy and gladness. In his holy name, amen.